Stan Jabalisco here from the Black Hills of South Dakota, United States of America. I would just like to show you how we evolve from a an amplitude modulated transmitter design to a single sideband transmitter design. Basically, what you're looking at right here is figure 25-1 from my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 5th edition I will provide a link to that book on Amazon.com in the description of this video what you're looking at here is a very simple test circuit for a an amplitude modulated transmitter you have an oscillator an amplitude modulator, an amplifier, a power amplifier in your antenna, and you can test it with something called a two-tone oscillator applied to the audio input of your modulator circuit. When you do that, you get very specific test patterns in the output that you can monitor to see whether or not you have distortion. But Normally, you would apply your voice audio signal to the input of this modulator in place of the two-tone oscillator. Your result would be an amplitude modulated signal at the output. By the way, this is a 1080p high definition video. So if you have a 1080p display, please blow the video up to full screen and hit your 1080p high definition setting on uh, YouTube. This is a circuit uh, that shows an amplitude modulator, a simple amplitude modulator. You apply the radio frequency carrier to the input and it's basically just a simple class A amplifier circuit. And you apply your audio to the uh, to the emitter of this transistor. This happens to be an NPN bipolar transistor. You apply your input to the emitter like that. Uh, that's the audio input so that in fact it varies the gain of this amplifier producing an amplitude modulated signal at your output. And if you look at a spectral analysis of an amplitude modulated voice signal you get something like this. Your carrier wave right at zero, that's the carrier frequency. Frequency relative to carrier in kilohertz you normally would want to filter, I have an audio filter in your audio input circuit right here, in order to keep the audio frequency energy below 3 kilohertz so that you get a total overall bandwidth of 6 kilohertz, up to 3 kilohertz for the upper side band and 3 kilohertz for the lower side band. That's how you get an amplitude modulated signal and that is what it looks like on a spectrum analyzer display. DBM means decibels with respect to one millivolt, I believe, but it's actually just a level of gain, less and less gain or more and more attenuation as you go down. Now, if you are able to develop a single sideband transmitter, what you do is you take away the carrier and you take away one of the sidebands leaving only the sideband energy for the other sideband intact in your transmitter output and the interesting thing is that in an amplitude modulated signal generally speaking the lower sideband LSB and the upper sideband USB are duplicates they contain duplicate information the carrier consume, consumes two-thirds of the signal power, each sideband one-third of the signal power, but really you only need one of the sidebands in order to convey all of the information. So this signal, in this case a lower sideband SSB, single sideband, lower sideband signal with a suppressed carrier, only consumes about um, one-sixth as much power as the original amplitude modulated signal did. The carrier consumes two-thirds. Each one of these sidebands consumes one-sixth for a total of 
six sixths. <laughs> I did I say one third for each side band? I meant one sixth, one third of the energy in both side bands combined. So you can actually boost your transmitter power by a factor of six to get the original power that you would have had here and you get six times as much effective output power for what really matters and that's what you're saying that's contained in this sideband energy i've shown you this circuit in another video a balanced modulator circuit that is how you get a double sideband suppressed carrier signal that looks just like this minus the carrier and then you get this by applying usually a brute force 3 kilohertz wide intermediate frequency filter and that is the final product a single sideband transmitter your oscillator your balanced modulator your microphone audio amplifier producing a double sideband suppressed carrier signal right there then your three kilohertz wide IF filter here to filter out either the lower or upper sideband as you may desire your driver or radio frequency amplifier and your power amplifier now this keep in mind that this is really a very much oversimplified block diagram it doesn't take into account intermediate frequencies and other such things but that is the basic principle by which a single sideband transmitter works to give you a signal that looks like that or if you want to make a mirror image around the suppressed carrier and use the upper sideband would contain exactly the same information Hope that helps you out a little bit. There's your single sideband transmitter block diagram in general. Signing off for now, Stan Jibalisco from the Nerd Cave in the Black Hills of South Dakota, United States of America. Until next time, so long. <laughs>